Okay, welcome to another exciting episode. Now in this one, we'll be learning how we can add products to a given shop. So here we have the list of shops that this particular logged in user owns. Now clicking on add product, it will bring up a new screen which will look like this. So here, if you observe the address bar, we have shops and then the shop ID and then the product belonging to that particular shop ID. So this is a dynamic route and we'll be exploring how we can create one in Next.js and also this form that we have here when we'll be entering the details and clicking on create, it's going to create an item or document in our product collection as you can see over here. So we have the shop ID, price, category, image, URL, name, and description for the product. Now, to have this, now to implement this, the first thing is over here, if you notice the shop collection that we have earlier, we were just having the data part, but the ID of the shop was coming in the ref object. So here we have updated the map. Now we have the shop data and we also have the ID. And then we have set this shop data over here. Now, when we do this under manage shops, we are calling the shop list. If I go over here inside the shop list, you'll notice that each div that we are iterating has this ID attribute. And along with this, we have also updated the add product from button to a link. And for that, we have imported link from next link package. And here, you'll notice the href attribute. So this is basically pointing to shops and then the ID that we have just now retrieved from that particular shop. And then we are going to products. Now, in order to have this dynamic route, as you'll observe, what we have done is inside pages directory, we have created shops directory. And then you'll notice that there's a specific ID attribute coming up, which is enclosed within these rectangular boxes. So this basically marks it as a dynamic route. So shops slash ID within rectangular brackets, and then we have this products dot tsx page. So this is now mapping to this particular file products dot tsx. So if I go to products dot tsx, what we are doing over here, we are having the use router, and we are having the component that we have created. That's a new product. We'll be exploring this in a moment. Then here. In the products page, we are having all the properties passed on, and we are using the router. And from the router, we are getting the ID attribute of the shop, which is being passed over here in the new product. Now, if I explore new product, it's basically a form. So here, if I scroll down and see the return, we have the product name, we have the description, image URL, category, and price. And once we're clicking on the submit button, you'll notice that it's going to call this handle submit. So let's wrap up this form and go to handle submit. Handle submit is basically calling this create product, which is getting all the data, price, and shop ID. Remember that shop ID is coming from the props that we have passed from the products.tsx page. So here we have all the data now. And we are calling the create product. Now, in order to create this product, we have to import certain things. So, if I go on top, you'll notice that we are using use mutation in GQL, and then we have created this map. Then we have created this mutation called create product. And here we are passing these parameters, and then we're calling this create product along with the data and the shop ID. So, here we have initialized the form with these values, and then we are making use of the use mutation and we're calling create product. Now here you'll observe we have this client. Now client is basically pointing to Apollo client. And here, what we have done is we have updated this URI. So earlier this URI was relative in nature. Now we have made it URL based. So here, if you see, we are accessing this now, next public API based URL, which is defined inside the environment.local file. And this is a variable. It should be local host for 3000. So at this URL, we are having the API slash on a handler. 
And within this, that's what we have done. The reason why we have to move from relative to this URL based approach, because when you are accessing client within a certain files, like in this case, new product.tsx, which is being called within this dynamic route, the client URI changes and it will not actually point to phone or handler.ts file, but it will assume that it's residing somewhere else, which is incorrect. So to resolve such things, it's recommended that you have defined one, that you have some kind of variable defined, which you can use in your Apollo client, like we have done over here, to avoid such issues. Now, coming back to new product.tsx file, here, when we are entering this, we are sending this data to our phone handler. If you see, we have updated our phone handler as well. So inside the post request, we are checking if the operation name is create shop, then we are creating a shop. And if the operation name is create product, then we are creating a product. Now, these names that we see over here, they are coming from the GQL statement that we have. So for new product, you can see on top when we have defined the GQL, here's the name of the operation create product. Similarly, if you go to new shop form and you look at the GQL, here we have create shop. So that's what we are referring over here when we see operation name. So if the operation name is create shop, we're calling this shop create. And if it's create product, we're calling this. Now here you'll notice we have the name, description, image URL, category, price, shop ID, and everything is passed over here and then it's being called. Now when it gets called, it gets stored over here in our file collection. When we click on this create, and if I look at the network tab, you'll see this is the payload that we are sending. So category, description, image URL, name, price, shop ID, and the response that we're getting is, this is the response to the rep. This is the ID that is getting created, and this is the data related to that ID. So here, if I go to my Fauna dashboard, you can see this is the ID that's coming up, 395317, and in the end, it's 0722. And that's what we have over here, 0722. So that's how easy it is to create products within a shop using HTS and for our